Maine Maritime Museum uh, was formed in 1962 under a different name. It was called the Marine Research Society of Bath originally. Uh, and it was formed to support uh, the research and writing of a maritime history of the Bath Customs District, the, basically the, all the towns uh, up and down the, the Kennebec River and a few others which were part of the, the Customs District uh, of Bath. And it just kind of grew into a, an actual museum in 1964, operated for a, for a number of years as the Bath Marine Museum and changed its name at some point in the 70s to Maine Maritime Museum. I believe we're the, the largest museum in terms of acreage, in terms of number of buildings that focuses directly on the maritime history of Maine. And uh, we do try to cover the whole coast in our exhibits. Like museums everywhere, we're, we're better at collecting right in the neighborhood uh, that's certainly true of Maine. Maine folks are, are more likely to give uh, a family treasure to somebody they know or to somebody uh, in, in their own uh, town or, or uh, vicinity uh, than they are to somebody from a long way away. Well, the definition of a museum is an institution that collects historic material, an institution which preserves that material, and an institution which uses that stuff uh, to teach people or educate people uh, about some particular thing. Uh, in our case, uh, the maritime history of Maine, which to us means the development of the coastal communities, it means uh, shipbuilding, it means boat building, it means the fisheries, it means trade, coastal trade as well as deep water trade, it means uh, transportation along the coast like the steamship lines, it means history of uh, war al along the main coast and a history of uh, travel, uh, excuse me, uh, leisure time activities along the main coast. Uh, there have been a few vessels uh, built <coughs> in entirely landlocked main communities. Uh, Bowdoin uh, is, uh, the town of Bowdoin is one of those that comes to mind. The, the story there was a story that you hear from time to time. The fellow decided it would be easier to build the boat or the ship where the trees were. And so he wouldn't have to transport all the trees to a waterfront site. Uh, so, and, he, and he did that. And they, you know, they hauled the, hauled the vessel uh, to the water with uh, you know, dozens or hundreds of teams of oxen. Uh, and, uh, and it was successfully launched. Uh, but the, everybody who has that idea, and a number, like as, as I said, a number of people have had it, builds exactly the same number of ships, which is one. <laughs> No, no one ever does it again. Uh, it's, it's, it is, in fact, much easier to move a tree to a waterfront site than to move a whole ship. We were in the right place at the right time. When the museum was started in the 1960s, uh, there were lots of local attics filled with, with maritime treasures. And people were very inclined to donate them to uh, an institution that was going to preserve them properly and show them to the public. And so uh, most of our stuff is, is actually just given to us. We occasionally buy things or we arrange to have somebody buy something for us if it's uh, uh, something that can't be passed up, but we really have very little funding for that sort of thing, and, uh, and so uh, we have to rely on donations, and we've been very lucky. We've had some wonderful, wonderful gifts over the years.